one for you. All of these tiny little pieces that extend beyond the boundaries of what our symbol should be made up of. And since I ungrouped all the elements, I can select those individually instead of having to use my direct selection tool. The last step is to mimic the look of the cable cross by removing the excess crossed lines in here. So what you're going to do is clear out the crossing lines for the part that crosses in front, which means a right crossing cable would lose these two pieces. And I can undo that. And a left crossing would lose these two pieces. Notice I don't need a box around this right now, and we'll see why that is later on. But I've created my cable cross. And now my next step is to determine whether I need to make these knit over pearl or knit over knit. Right now this is a perfectly acceptable symbol for a knit over knit cable cross. I'm going to turn off snap to grid, select the ellipse tool, and if I want I can option shift, draw a very small black dot, and that would indicate perhaps a single purl stitch. I could double it up to indicate that there are two purl stitches being crossed there. Duplicate those down here. Oops. And you'll see I got that little invisible triangle there. That was just the color that filled in the space there. Don't worry about it. It's fine if it's there, just delete it. If it's not there, don't worry about it. This could ind indicate the double purl stitch. Another option would be to turn back on Snap to Grid and actually draw a, a shaded color behind the cross. So to do that, I'll pick my fill color, which is just a light gray, turn back on my grid so I can make sure I'm right on track. Make sure it's the fill and no stroke. And then simply draw a shape. And then send that shape to back by holding down Command, Shift, and the open bracket key. And I can do that again over here. Send back. And there's another way to indicate pearl stitches. This would also be an excellent way to do a two color cable chart. You could indicate one color in the background and the other color in front. Refer back to the color work chart tutorials to see how to do color work charts if that's helpful to you. So that's at its core how you build your individual cable chart symbols. You might want to embellish that further by indicating that you have two stitches by adding another line in there and we can just make that light and gray so that it's not obtrusive but it's a little guide visually for people. When you're happy with your final stitch select all and group it and then you can reverse it in the same way that we reverse those those strokes inside and I cover all that duplicating and and reversing in previous tutorials. So using the skills that we learned in the previous tutorials and what I just showed you in this tutorial, I made a whole bunch of cable crosses that are appropriate for the chart I need to make. And you can see that for me, I, I like to do both a gray and a dot to indicate pearl stitches. So those are generally called twisted stitches and um, just plain white for the knit stitches. If you had two different colors, if you were doing a two color cable chart, you could use the same method to indicate both colors. Whatever you think will convey your, your intention best, you can go ahead and do that. So this is a cable chart built just like we did all the other cable charts, all the other stitch pattern charts that I've shown in this series of tutorials. And I just have one last step that I want to do just to make this a little more clear for 
people who are reading this chart in my pattern, and this is actually one of my charts from the Jameson pattern. I've gone ahead and made a new layer, and I'm going to lock my other layers because I want to make sure I don't, I can get to these individual elements as I need them and adjust them later. I want to set my stroke color to black and my fill to none. I'm going to use my, my line tool, which I get to with the slash. And I want to set my stroke weight to three quarters of a point, as I've done here. So now I can just go ahead and draw in lines that indicate where these cables are outlined. And this isn't necessary, I just think it adds a little more clarity to the cables themselves. I've done this instead of drawing boxes around my stitches like I would with a knit or a purl. I kept those open and then I can put in lines just where I want them to be. It's a little bit tedious, I guess, but I think it just adds that nice little extra touch to the stitch pattern to include those. And you can decide what needs to be outlined and what doesn't. 